Thank you everyone for joining us today. Over the last decade, mobile devices have become essential tools for our daily lives. We use them to learn, we use them to work, and to take a break every now and then. So, how do we keep all our essential gears charged? Today, we have something special we've been working on for the last three years. Something we believe is the next big thing towards a hassle-free charging experience. Here to tell us more about is Carl Sun. Thank you, Stephen. Charging all our devices is a hassle. In the old days, inbox cables and chargers were the way to go. And we'd be juggling all of these different plugs and different devices. New laptops or smartphones would come with a set of inbox charging accessories, which most of us would put immediately to good use, leaving our old chargers and cables behind. However, this collection of older accessories was left unused and eventually thrown out in the trash, generating over 300,000 tons of e-waste globally every year. But thankfully, things have changed. OEM started removing inbox chargers, leaving companies like Anchor to fill the gap. So we decided to take on the challenge and make a charger that can charge all of your mobile devices. A charger so versatile that it can be used for years to come. The result was the Atom PD-1, the first commercially available GAN charger in the world. GAN is a much more efficient material than silicon. It allows for smaller chargers that are faster and last longer. Over the last three years, GAN has been rapidly adopted by the consumer electronics industry. Last year alone, over 20 million GAN chargers were shipped worldwide and we're expecting this number to double in 2021. Today, we want to show you what we've been working on for the last few years. The latest GAN technology from Anchor, GAN2. We are very excited to get this new generation of Anchor Nano 2 chargers in your hands. Here to tell you more about Nano 2 is our Corporate Communications Director, Edo. Edo? Thanks, Carol. This new lineup of Nano 2 chargers is a big leap forward from the previous generation. There are other chargers in the market that are small, offer high power outputs, but don't leverage GAN. Most of them will overheat easily when in use, especially when outputting over 45 watts of power when charging a laptop, for example. This is due to the low efficiency of the chargers, or in other words, the slow speed at which the charger is able to use electric current from the wall to charge your device. In the long run, overheating can throttle charging speeds and shorten the life of the charger. GAN completely changed that. The GAN2 chips in our new charger lineup allows components inside the chargers to be closer together this translates in smaller chargers that offer faster charging speeds without the risk of overheating, making the Anchor Nano 2 chargers the safest, fastest, most efficient yet. The Nano 2 series features a single USB-C port powered by our own PowerIQ 3.0 technology, now compatible with most fast charging protocols in the market. With PowerIQ 3.0, the chargers can recognize a device connected in order to charge it at the fastest speed possible. The 65 watt charger is almost as small as the Atom PD-1, but more than twice as powerful. Enough to charge most smartphones, tablets, or USB-C laptops. Great for those needing to charge an entire arsenal of electronics in the office, the school, or on the go. For those willing to travel light, the 30 watt charger is the one to go for. It weighs only 1.65 ounces or 47 grams, but can easily handle a Nintendo Switch or even a modern MacBook Air. The last one in the lineup, the GAN2 45 watt charger is the perfect middle ground between size and speed. It's just a tad bigger than the 30 watt, but with the extra 15 watt, keeping Chromebooks and other notebooks charged won't be a problem. Additionally, the 45 watt and the 65 watt options both feature foldable plugs for maximum portability. 
All three chargers are available today for pre-order on Amazon and Anchor.com in the United States only. They will be shipping in the middle of June. The tiny 30 watt model is available for $29.99, the 45 watt charger for $35.99, and the 65 watt for $39.99. Additionally, the 45 watt charger is available for purchase at select Best Buy retail stores in the United States starting today. Thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us on all of our social media channels. But before we go, we have a very special treat for you. Ever since the beginning of our journey, Anchor has been fueled by power and speed, but we are not the only ones. We thought it would be very fun to join forces with the Guinness World Records and the man who is making human flight a reality, Richard Browning. Richard has twice broken the record of fastest speed in a body-controlled jet engine power suit. Today, he'll try to add three more of these records to his name. Let's join Bell Donati and the team from Guinness World Records in Southampton, United Kingdom. Hello, my name's Bell Donati. Welcome to the Southampton Athletics Centre, where we are here for today's Anchor Speed Challenge. Now, if the thought of human flight sounds a bit nuts to you, stay with us, prepare to be amazed, because we have Richard Browning, who's here today. He's making human flight a reality, and he's here to attempt a jet suit triathlon. So Richard, talk us through what we're doing today. Uh, we are going to run through a series of athletic endeavours, challenges. Anchor have essentially laid down some ideas of how we can try and reset the boundaries of kind of human machine capability. Uh, it's going to be the 100 metres, the 400 metres hurdles, and then the pole vault, which is going to be an interesting one. Of course, we've seen these done uh, from the ground. Now they're going to be done from just above the ground. How are you feeling about it? Uh, I mean, we, we love challenges. I wouldn't be standing here in this if we didn't. Um, and it's going to be interesting. I genuinely don't know how far we can go versus the established records when you don't wear a thousand horsepower jet suit. OK, well, I better get out of your way. I'm going to go stick my ear defenders on. See you in a tick. Good idea. Now, he already holds the record for going the fastest in a body controlled jet engine power suit. He first broke the record with a speed of 32 miles an hour. Since then, he smashed that with 85 miles an hour. Let's see if he can get the short burst of speed he needs to break the 100 metres today. This is an official Guinness World Records attempt. Three, two, one, go! I said go as fast as that. Is it going to be a record? That looked pretty fast. What speed were we at? Okay, so as we know, famously Usain Bolt achieved uh, 100 meters in 9.58 seconds. Now the Guinness World Records title was set today at eight seconds. You achieved 7.69 seconds, which means it's a brand new Guinness World Records title. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, that felt pretty good. And I, I had some pretty decent speed coming across the finish line. But I have to say, it, it all respect to Usain Bolt, because I thought that felt pretty quick. I can only imagine running not that much slower. It's just amazing. Fantastic. All right, well, it's on to the next one now. Absolutely, let's go. Right, well, while Richard gets ready for the next challenge, uh, we're going to go up to Elvington, where our adjudicator, Alan, has been meeting some more speedy record breakers. <laughs> I'm here at Elvington Airfield where I'm pleased to announce that two new Guinness World Record titles have been achieved. One for the fastest wheelie bin. And one for the fastest wheelbarrow. Here 
incredible. The Hawk, highly advanced water closet Mark I, failed to beat its own record for the fastest motorized toilet at 70.545 miles per hour. But there may be glory later on when our three vehicles go head to head. Welcome back to the Southampton Athletic Centre. We are, of course, here for Richard's Jet Suit Triathlon. Now, you might be able to tell from what's behind me what the next challenge is. It's the hurdles. This is an official Guinness World Records attempt. Three, two, one. Go! Here comes Richard. Richard, how was that for you? Oh, it was great fun. Yeah, I, I, it was a really interesting challenge to try and rise up and drop between the hurdles. And I felt that was about as much as I could do without risking kind of like touching the ground. Got Callum coming in. It seems unfair, Callum, that you should be out of breath at the end of that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Richard's not at all. How was it for you? What did it feel like? Oh, well, it was quite hard. It's quite a lot of when I run comes from hearing and not being able <laughs> to hear me made it quite hard. Like I hit the first hurdle and I was I wasn't able to hear it, which was very odd. What about the smell? Oh, it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> disgusting smell, my God. All right, well, let's go over to Alan because we want to know how Richard did. He was talking about that up and down between each hurdle. Was it low enough? Yeah, so as Richard mentioned, that's a crucial rule and guideline that Guinness World Records set for this challenge, that there must be a dip in between each of the hurdles. And I'm pleased to say that Richard did manage to do that. Now, the current world record for athletics of 400 meters uh, hurdles is 46.78 seconds. The Guinness World Record set a minimum time today to be of 50 seconds for Richard, and he achieved 42.06 seconds. Not only did he beat the, uh, the current world record for hurdles, he's also a new Guinness World Records title holder once again. Congratulations. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much, Gibbs. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. It was mostly cool just watching him round that first bend. I mean, his skill to do what he does is fantastic. And uh, yeah, and I guess I did kind of blow a lot of hot air in your direction. Uh, but yeah, it was really fun. That was great fun. Oh, wonderful to see you both competing together as well. Uh, we're going to let you get ready for the next event now. Yes, exactly. Yes, we better go. Well, while Richard gets ready for the last of our special triathlon events, so we're going to head back up north uh, to see some more fast action from adjudicator Allen's recent trip to Elvington. Well, we've just seen our record breakers attempting to break their own records, but how will they do in a head-to-head -head race? Or should I say, wheelie bin, wheelbarrow, toilet race? It was great to win the Anchor Speed Challenge. I'm really happy I came uh, and had a really good day out beating all the uh, other contenders. Alan, that looks like a lot of fun. Do you have the best job in the world? I'd say probably do, yes. Well, it's certainly uh, work with some of the best people in the world, our record breakers, but it can be tricky sometimes to keep up with them. Yeah, I can imagine. I wouldn't like to try it myself. Um, now, we've got the next event just behind us being set up. It's the mm. pole vault. Alan, we've seen our athlete doing the pole vault. I know how that works. How does it work with a jet suit? So this record is once again all about speed. So Richard actually won't be using a pole. So what he has to do is about the time he takes from him to travel 40 meters up to the pole, and then he must go over six meters and then land on the mat. And that's when the time stops. 
All right, well, let's see if Richard can rise to the challenge. This is an official Guinness World Records attempt. Three, two, one. Well, that was the third and final of our anchor speed challenges today. Richard, come on in, well done to you. We saw you going over the vault, of course, but it was all about speed. Alan, did he get the record? Okay, so what Richard had to achieve in this is he had to go over the pole, which was set just over the current world record for pole vault. So it was set 6.19 meters. Now the minimum requirement that you had to beat was 15 seconds and you achieved it in 13.09 seconds, which means a Guinness World Records title. So that means during the Anchor Speed Challenge, you've achieved not one, not two, but three Guinness World Records titles. Congratulations, you are officially amazing. Really? Very much. <laughs> How does it feel? Great, yeah, it's really good. I mean, it, it's obviously, we, we are, we are, not doing it uh, as the, uh, you know, the, the Olympic disciplines are intended, but it is quite a nice demonstration of just what you can do with a little bit of technology and you know, the human body and mind. So yeah, I'm delighted we managed to break all those records. Today was all about speed for you. What does speed mean for you? Well, this is really nice actually, because we, uh, a couple of years ago, set the speed record in this equipment, in fact, and that was beating a record we'd set with Guinness World Records a few years before then. So actually speed is a you know, core ingredient of what we do here. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to uh, come along and set more records. Well, Richard, many congratulations to you, the holder now of not one, but three Guinness World Record titles. So uh, yeah, now we've got five. Oh, it's, um, yeah, it's motorised wheelbarrow, engine's underneath. I have to stand on a platform behind it because I can't run at 45 miles an hour. It's got a motorbike engine on the back, uh, an old steel prison toilet <laughs> strapped on. It's got a pit bike engine, 110cc, a uh, go-kart rear axle and some mobility scooter steering. It's been a, a labour of love over two years. It's the most insane thing that I've ever ridden or driven in my life. And there's been a few. I like to go fast because it's fun, exciting and it gets the adrenaline going. It's just keeps you young, doesn't it? I like to go fast simply because going slow is boring. 